The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the hosts and not the hosts' past, present, or future employers. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Brian and Miss Berlin for Breaking Down Security. Yay. Wow. Is that just a thing that the, the space gets larger That's every it. week? You know, That's all I got. I know you were probably waiting for Mr. Betcher and you feeling a little left out, but he's not here this week. So I was feeling left out. Well, his yays are so much better than mine. Are they? <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. I've never heard him yay. I'm getting, I've never heard him yay. I'm getting a signal. Yes, yes, they are, in fact, uh, better. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, so Mr. Betcher's not here to defend himself this week, unfortunately. Uh, he and his family are taking a road trip. I don't know where. Uh, if you know, you're a better person than I am. But um, he, dude loves him some driving. I tell you what, he... I Me don't, too, man. I think it's fun. No, no. Depending no. on the company. Depending on the company. No, like I, I, I can. I don't want to. I don't want to road trip on myself, but I will drive with people I enjoy hanging out with. Oh God, I am an airport driver. I drive to the airport to get on a plane and drive there and fly there in three <laughs> hours. That that is me. I do not drive. I I drove. I think one trip from Missouri out to Monterey, uh, from my house and and in Springfield, Missouri, to Monterey, California, when I was eighteen in a new car that I had just bought. And it so so for you kids out there, we didn't have satellite radio back in the day. <laughs> So, you know, I'm sitting in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and there's nothing on the radio and there is no landscape because it is nine o'clock at night and it is completely dark. And I'm like trying not to fall asleep. And yeah, (laughs) it it was not fun. Um, And I did that. It's different when you road trip with people. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, driving to DEF CON changed me. Mm. So for the better, I hope. I don't know. Uh, I mean, say. they're in backs, like, well, one way, 36 hours. And then right. also, like, I want to drive, like, when I actually get my Tesla, who knows when that'll be. But I'll drive out and see you. Nice. Yeah. So like, 53 hours or something. Well, you'll have, you'll have <laughs> stick to the interstates. That's where the superchargers are, so... Um, <clears throat> right. I, I find that it's, it's best to have the supercharger network and a backup network. So I have a uh, charge point Correct. or something else as well. So that if I do get stuck somewhere, um, I actually have a mobile charger I put in my car as well. Uh, that way I could always knock on somebody's door and go, Hey, is your dryer out in your garage? Uh, I'd like to use it. Or, you know, RV spots have 40, 50 amp plugs on them as well. So if you've got space available in an RV park, you can go and grab it there too. Some things that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah, because it, I, I would be anxious, very, very anxious Mm -hmm. only having an electric vehicle. So I would need, I would need some kind of backup. Yeah. Well, there's, there's websites like a better route planner you can use and you could say, Hey, I want to go from here to here. I have a Tesla. It's going to be roughly 60 degrees Fahrenheit or, you know, 61, you know, uh, 15, you know, 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, you know, uh, here's my starting charge uh, percentage. Here's what the in charge percentage. So if like you take a trip to, from here back to my home in, uh, in Seattle to Springfield, it'll tell you, how many minutes you have to be at each charger. So it's like, oh yeah, pull into this charger for five minutes and charge up. And I'm like, seriously, five whole minutes? And it's like, oh yeah, that'll get you another 80 miles down the road and you can go to this one for another seven minutes. I'm like, you know, maybe I'll just let it charge up for about 15 minutes and then bypass that one. Right. Yeah, I, <laughs> right. yeah, I, I, I didn't, I haven't quite understood why it makes you Some stop. Some people like stopping a lot. Well, you know, if you got to go to the bathroom or small bladders. I could see it if you wanted to go to the bathroom and there's a supercharger next to a gas station. You go in, you plug in, sure. run over, you know, get you a Coke and a joke and uh, get back in the car and, and, and toddle on. But yeah. So, um, yeah, Mr. Betcher, he, he's driving and I uh, hope he drives safely. Uh, there's not crazy people out there who just, you know, trying to, to make things happen. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he's driven all the way up from, from Austin to see me here in Seattle. So 
Yeah. He loves him some driving. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, he's got five kids that are actually, I think three kids that are driving age now. So, uh, it's kind of, kind of fun. So, but we miss him and, uh, he'll be back next week. And, uh, you know, we've done, I'd say we've done almost 20 straight weeks of interviews. So we were just going to do a little news this week. So sorry. And Brian didn't want any of that. So <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. So he drove away. That's true. Yeah. Um, but, oh, so before we get started, Ms. Berlin, you are uh, now a Marine mom. Uh, thank you for... Not, well, your... not technically. I'm not not until he graduates, right? Uh, well, that... It, well, until yeah. he passes the crucible. <clears throat> crucible? Okay. Mm-hmm. So he's in the Marine Corps. Uh, yep. You know, wow. That's uh, one of my wife's nephews. I guess I'm making my nephew as well, but in law, uh, went to the Air Force um, so I was like, yeah, that's probably the best, uh, the best, you know, group if you want to, you know, get a more futuristic ed- education. I was in the Navy myself. Depends on, you know, which job you do there. Um, you know, they all make fun of each other. It doesn't matter where you go. They do. And, you know, to be fair, it's all in good fun. Yeah. Mostly sometimes. Um, yeah. but he's, yeah. he's a ripped young man. He'll do fine physically. That's good. Um, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let him, uh, don't let him, you know, forget to stay in shape because it's taken me quite a, quite a bit to get back into a shape that isn't a football and, uh, <laughs> uh American football. Well, I guess, I guess European football I mean, would work too. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's probably more <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I always found, uh, when I was on Air Force bases, the food was far better than the Navy bases. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So he told me to stock up on MREs because he loves them. I read that note. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, th- there's so many people have so many different ways of eating various things in there. It's like, you know, different recipes and formula, like the hot sauce goes in certain things. And mm-hmm. you always save the cupcakes for last. Cause they're supposed to be like a meal a day or something like that. They got like 15,000 calories or something in them. So yeah, he could eat probably several a day. Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those kids that just can constantly eat and never gain any weight. I, I was that way too. And then I stepped on a scale and it weighed 260. And I was like, yeah, just wire my mouth shut after you, you know, punch it. So, but yeah. So, um, I appreciate it. And a lot of people don't uh, think about the people in their lives. You know, uh, when, when people say thank you for your service, they're doing it to veterans, but wives, husbands, partners, mothers, fathers of these people, they all, you know, mm-hmm. contribute as well. So thank you for your service as well. So, um, cause yeah. you're, you're giving My him, job's done. that's right. <laughs> well, you, you're giving, you're giving him to the government for use for a indeterminate amount of time, depending on how well he likes it. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. He's, he's wanted to do it since he was young. So. Right on, right on. Um, okay. We've got some stuff. I got some news. Uh, one of the things I, I found, uh, just poking around, uh, the, the net uh, Reddit, uh, it's hiding your dot net, uh, com plus ETW enabled. And it says, it turns out there's a method of disabling, uh, ETW, which is the, um, damn ETW don't know why I have to go look this up. It's the event viewer uh, system, event tracing for Windows. Uh, there's a way of disabling that uh, by using a, an environment variable. So uh, Adam, Adam Chester's blog post from June 6th, which I had found very interesting, uh, is there, there's a way to disable that. So I was just wondering, uh, does, does that give any kind of notification that that's actually been turned off or is that something that, that kind of fails silently? And I have no idea. I mean, running the command itself would end up in the event viewer, I imagine. Mm. Yeah. E- so- I mean, even if it does end up shutting things off, I wonder if it shuts off every, I didn't, this is the only one of all of the ones that you sent me that I didn't read. Oh, um, we can skip it and come back to it later. But, uh, he, he says com plus underscore prefix settings provide developers. A number of configuration options can be set at runtime with various levels of impact on the CLR from loading alternative jitters 
to tweaking performance and even dumping the IL of a method. Uh, being... Well, and then there, and I, so this is what I really like when that when people add defending and detecting stuff to things like this. Mm -hmm. So like, good yep. job, Adam, because yeah. like a very small percentage of people that write offensive stuff mm -hmm. add it add any kind of defensive stuff to it. Yeah. Um, and at the end, like, yeah, at the end. It said uh, for defending against this, there's an awesome set of notes from uh, Roberto Rodriguez, who we've had on the show. Details a number of yeah, on uh, 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 details a number of detections and mitigations that can be used to detect and protect an environment. And he has yep. another blog post that it, that it sends you to. Yep. But yeah, I mean, just the fact that he points out that there is defending and detecting against that is fantastic. Yeah. So the .NET runtime and event provider requires a setting com plus underscore ETW enabled equals one in your process environment. Setting that to zero apparently changes all of your .NET framework logging and your uh, and and changes a bunch of stuff. So that's what you see if you go to Cyber War Dog or um, Rob, Rob, Roberto Rodriguez's uh, uh, site, uh, uh, his GitHub. Yeah, let me put that link in that in the show notes to that. Oh, it, gen well. it does generate a forty six fifty seven event. Is that a is that a fairly well known forty process? Is that process create? Oh, registry object added deleted. Ah, okay. Well, that might actually be a good thing if you you should be probably logging if registry values were modified, right? Or is that something that's very noisy? Mm -hmm. So did uh, it is, but it's super helpful. I mean, there's a sys, there's a sysmon, sysmon, sysmon will take care of it too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's got a really in depth like sysmon Yara. Um, uh, Sigma rules like he has everything in the in a defensive uh, like detection blog. Well, it's a gist thing, but yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, logging different stuff like that, um, I figured out something cool not that long ago. What's that? And released it as a tool. And I forgot to tell you about it. Um, it's not really a tool. It's more of just like, uh, I can't believe nobody else did this before. So I just went ahead and did it. Oh, right on. Uh, it's just a GPO backup of all of the recommended logging settings that you should have. Huh. It... Because nobody had it out there and it's a pain in the butt to do it manually because like there's, I don't know, 60 settings or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, in you... advanced audit logs. Do you have a link to and that? I just went it i can put it in the show notes it's it i've tweeted out about it i think oh i oh that one yes i remember that post that was so awesome Maybe. <laughs> I, I laughed i cried my our our marketing people called it something weird uh oh no but, you didn't you didn't let them name your called, tool for you did you uh, yeah they it's but it's not a tool so i i don't care as long as it's out there when when um, tools name tools you know that's that's not good yeah i'm sorry yeah, marketing like people name, don't You're, tell them that marketing people aren't tools i'm sorry uh yeah they're doing a very good job with our marketing but uh they okay. call it log mira which whatever um really it's just a gpo backup but i can put it in the in the oh, notes. i was just tired is. of like found it yeah, I was, oh. I was just tired of having to do it all the time because I've made like 10 labs over the last couple of years and I just had to manually go in all the time and set all this crap. Yeah, it's way easier just to import it to GPO. Blumera senior incident. But that will turn engineer. on registry. Nice. <laughs> Has created. That will turn on the registry uh, addition creation stuff. All right, so Logmira is uh, there's a link to the uh, to the tw to the blog. Not to toot my own horn, but to anyway. totally toot my own horn. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, let me see where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Oh, there it is. Uh, Blue Maria were detected. Okay, 
Very nice. Oh, there was a webinar on June eighteenth as well. Did you do that or was it somebody else? I know. I did. It was okay. super fun. Yeah? Yeah. That was cool. I how liked many it a lot. How many people showed up? It was the Twenty five or something. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Especially like because not very many people know who we are. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. It's nice to have. And and why some you, people on there? Why is it difficult to back up GPO stuff? Is it just not a not something that's? It's uh... not like nothing I did is difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you can go through and just do it all manually. And like create a GPO and set all your advanced logging settings. It just takes time. Right. And a lot of the people that I was asking to do it just weren't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's easier just to say, here, download and import this. Yeah. And then you're done. Uh, and then good. they don't have to worry about going through all the settings and figuring out what to do. What's it run in? Like uh, .NET or something? Did you, you scripted all this up? No, it's all I did was go into my lab, export the GPO to a backup, and they just have to copy it in and import it. Oh, wow. Okay. It's like just built in Windows features. That's why I didn't want to call it a tool because it's not. Oh, yes, it is. It, oh, I didn't oh, yes. write anything. I just did something that nobody else had offered up before, I guess, at least that I could find. Sounds like a tool to me. Nah. Could be. Hey, you know what? It, it, I've not heard of this before. I didn't even know you could back up your GPO settings like this. So mm -hmm. you've, you've done far more than I have, have done this week, which is fuck all. <laughs> I've done fuck all this week. So, but that's pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's a game. thing. All right. So yeah, it's, um, uh, log Mira. Okay. And it actually mm -hmm. has good SEO because I just searched log Mira and it comes up. That's the first thing come up. You didn't know. We you know. now have some super good marketing and SEO people. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have called them tools earlier. So that's okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway, they know I like them. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there, so the, okay. So we were talking about disabling, uh, event, w uh, logging for windows or ETW. Uh, and it, that generates a 4657, which means that there's been a registry change or a modification, which is, uh, usually an indicator that something is going on inside the registry that shouldn't be, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes that can be noisy. Sometimes it isn't, but, um, yeah, I guess it depends. I mean, cause on... it's going to log all of your registry changes. Right. Okay. Which there's a lot of, right. Mm -hmm. But. Okay. I mean, systems now can handle logging all of that stuff. Right. Like back when it was NT XP when, you know, server 2000 or whatever, I don't think they could handle it. Cause you didn't always have the BPS boxes or whatever. Right. Right. So if you're, I mean, if you're still running on shit hardware, maybe it still can't, but yeah. Okay. It's anything now it should be able to. Nice. Okay. Uh, how would you, um, so we're, we're talking about logging. So, you know, you're, you're the, you're the miter queen. So how does, <laughs> how would this stack up inside the miter matrix? Would this be something with registry modification? Would this be a, mm -hmm. a, a logging? Uh, cause my, my question, and we talked about this before was like, can one attack be two different things in the matrix? So if this is where something is disabling logging, but also making modifications to the registry, one attack could actually be two different things on the, on the, on the, yep. on the miter. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there may actually be more depending on how you want to classify this or what it, you know, what the outcome of it is versus what it exactly is doing. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that before we continue on? Um, I mean, it won't, it won't log that. What, what event did, what event did I say that was? That's like a 40, 46, 57. It won't log that by default. Oh, okay. So you'd need a, another tool to make sure that logging is set up properly. Like Mr. Betcher's log MD stuff or, uh, if you don't have something to set Just, that up yourself. Uh, either Sysmon or just those GPOs. Hmm. Okay. All right. Because it does it standard. It doesn't do it standard, but it will if you turn it on. <laughs> right. 
And after, um, uh, I don't know if it's if this is still the same, but uh, we when we we've, we've had Michael Goff on in the past when he said that updates are ran or patch twosies are ran. Sometimes it'll reset all your logging stuff. So uh, the the backup, the GPO backup stuff that you're doing, would you have to reapply that, or is that something you want to do on every startup, or only when there's major changes to your GPO? Uh, it it computers regularly check in and apply the GPO settings. Oh, like good. Daily. Okay. Um, users do it every time they log in. The computer computer will do it any time it boots up and logs into the network. Right. Um, and then randomly. Okay. Unless you force it. Oh, like uh, GPO GPO force or GPO GP results. Yeah, there. GP update. GP force. update. That's it. That's it. Yes, it's been a while since I've played around with GP GP update, <clears throat> as you can tell. Been doing uh, a lot with it. <laughs> really? Okay. okay. Yeah, because I also had to test it to make sure it worked. Because uh, my lab is 2019 servers. Oh, right. I wanted to make sure it worked on any current OS. Okay. And like functional level, all that kind of stuff. So I have like four different domains. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> I was testing it back and forth through. So you have a, yeah. what, 2019, <laughs> 2016, 2012, and 2008? Mm-hmm. You said, okay. At 2008 R2, which technically R2. I don't think is still supported, but no, yeah. there's still enough people that have it. I, I bet there's still folks out there with 2003 servers. Would, uh, would this work in Azure as well? Oh, there are. <laughs> would this also work um, in Azure AD or anything like that? I have no idea. I've not done anything with Azure. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've I, done a little bit of their logging stuff, but just like it's kind of messy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of difference there, but I know a lot of companies are no longer using on-prem AD servers and they're using Azure AD to kind of uh, handle authentication and AAA stuff across cloud and on-prem. So, um, <clears throat> cool. Um, all right, so I don't know if anybody else has been following along in the news, but there was this Ripple 20 that came through. Now... If you're looking for the 20th vulnerability on this, Miss Berlin actually brought up a good point. There's only actually 19 vulnerabilities. And uh, we've had one of the marketing people for that company reach out to us and ask us if they could come on the show and talk about Ripple 19 point plus one or something like that. There's only 19 vulnerabilities, but they call it Ripple 20. We're not sure exactly why. Uh, That's why we're not having them on the show. <laughs> I can't have people who don't know how to count on my show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sign my change.org petition to change it to Ripple 19. Oh my. Uh, okay. <sighs> Great. Yeah. So it it's, it's interesting because the, they're IoT vulnerabilities. And the way they're making it sound that this is, this it, it's a lot of TCP IP stack issues. So... Uh, for those mm-hmm. of you who uh, aren't aware, IoT doesn't always have a full T- TCP IP stack. Sometimes they don't have kernels. Sometimes they don't have, uh, you know, file systems. A lot of times they run out of a single file that gets booted uh, by something, you know, by the, the firmware or whatever on, on startup. Uh, they're not like, not of, you know, some of them are missing some major components of their systems. And sometimes they have a custom TCP IP stack. And apparently that is what the case is with this Ripple 20. Um, I was looking at what, what, what was, what was the one I was looking at where I said, oh yeah, 19 of the 20 are, are this, but it wasn't actually 19 of the 20. Uh, da, 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 where is it? That's what I get for having too many damn links open. <laughs> Uh, it was the tenable post what yeah so oh, the tenable one? yeah it was the tenable blog post that's what it was so i actually uh pulled that up and it says uh researchers discovered 19 new zero day vulnerabilities and tcp ip software library developed by trek um and if you read through these and you go down in order starting from cvss version 3 you know rating 10 and above and going down to where it's only 3.1 18 of these 19 vulnerabilities are out of bounds reads, incorrect permission assignment for critical resource, integer over underflows, 
uh, use after free vulnerabilities, out of bounds rights, remote code exec, remote code exec, and exposure sensitive information. A lot of stuff. Well, there's a lot of them that are code issues. You know, uh, integer underflows, right. out of bounds reads, use after freeze. Those are all coding issues, which leads me to believe that there's maybe some lack of re- review of code before things go out. That track? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the blog post is kind of interesting. I, I just wonder, like, how all of it, like, because obviously these are all from that one manufacturer. Mm-hmm, Yeah. So I just kind of wonder, all right, they found one. Let's see what else these things are hiding. Yeah. And then they just went through the whole thing and found a whole bunch of them. Yep. So it's one of the worst. They tried really hard to find the 20th one. (laughs) It must be it. They're like, okay, we need to find 20 vulnerabilities before the deadline. It's like, damn it, boss. We only got 19. Well, we'll just call it that. That's right. Nobody will notice. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Nobody will actually bother to count them up. (laughs) Um. They'll never come on the show now. They'll be like, how are we going to explain this? (laughs) They ruined it. No. But so it it says, uh, what, uh, 2020, 11,896. We're already at at least 12,000 vulnerabilities for the year, and it's only June. Uh, Improper handling of a length parameter inconsistency in the IPv4 UDP component when handling a packet sent by an unauthorized network attacker. This vulnerability may result in remote code exec. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, and then they have the IPv6 version, which is also, uh, uh, that, that just results in an out of bounds, right? Um, but yeah, their, their IPv4, uh, uh, you know, and their TCP stack is, is pretty banged up. Um, and where's the, where's the whole post on this? It said that they, the company actually reached out to the Israeli based company and let's see. Wait, I, mean, I thought Track was in Cincinnati. Oh, there's. I'm sorry. the The company JSOF is in Jerusalem, Israel. That's what it is. Oh. Okay. And then they reached out to Trek, which is in. You're right, Cincinnati. I got it mixed up. Uh, yeah. And they said uh, JSOF said this operation involved a lot of work and different steps, getting Trek on board, making sure Trek has patches on time, and then finding all the vulnerable equipment and reaching out to each of the impacted vendors. Uh, where was it? oh Trek? And well, there were a lot of vendors. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, this this goes back to like you know Node.js and all those. It's very similar. Mm-hmm. It's like you've got one technology that millions of companies use, and yep, you know, it's it's all built on a on a pile of sand. It says Trek, while reticent in the beginning and thinking it was subject of an extortion attempt, was now fully on board. So. So this company reaches out to Trek. Hey, we found all these vulnerabilities in your shit. Trek's like, oh, we're being extorted or something. I don't oh. know. Uh, probably shouldn't say that, huh? Uh, okay. I wonder if it was that, though. I mean. It I, it all depends on, you know, how many companies, uh, how many times have been reached out for by other companies saying that they've got issues. They probably don't mm-hmm. have a bug bounty program. You know, they are fairly insulated. Um, so, yeah, I... I don't know why they thought that way, but it's great that JSOF has been able to work with them to fix these 20 and God knows how many more they found, but those were, uh, uh, they're only disclosing all this because they probably fixed these, but if they have out of bounds and use after free vulnerabilities in at this part of their code base, uh, maybe they need to invest in a SAST or a DAST or something Maybe mm-hmm. do some proper code release processes, which requires code review, et cetera. Um, you know, maybe some hard coded credentials in there we can find to actually, you know, just put the put the little white dot on top of this pile of shit. So uh let me see, what else? Um yeah, they said the the four vulnerabilities when weaponized could allow attackers to easily take over smart devices or any industrial or healthcare equipment. So this is a company that deals with IoT in the indus- industrial SCADA and healthcare industry, which, as we know, have no problems with security on their own. Um, yeah. What what kills me is there's not more healthcare companies or industrial equipment companies aren't asking for security testing of the stuff that they're doing either 
from an independent third party that will come in and test to make sure that these things don't exist. My, I guess the question I would have for the JSOF folks is how did they get involved? Did they get involved because a third party said, Hey, we want you to check these folks out, um, or, or what? So I don't know. Yeah. It just says since 2019, the researchers were looking at Trex TCP IP stack due to its broad footprint access across industrial healthcare and smart device markets. So it, it may be that a third party said, Hey, we're going to use this, but we need to make sure it doesn't suck. Yeah. Um, so, um, that, which is cool if the third party allowed JSOF to reach out to Trek and say, Hey, you need to fix this. Um, mm-hmm. but it sounds like JSOF had no idea that they were being evaluated in that respect. Um, otherwise they wouldn't have been reticent at the beginning and thinking they were subject to an extortion attempt. So, right. um, yeah, I find that, uh, it's interesting stuff though. Well, at least they, they came around and, you know, we're not finding, you know, them lawyering up to try to to block that kind of discussion or what have you so um, i wonder if they now know what sdlc means maybe <laughs> i don't know uh it would be it'd be nice if they did uh you know maybe something as simple as updating their their yeah having an sdlc is probably be helpful yeah you're right mm-hmm. you're right um Let's see. Uh, one last story, which I actually found kind of ironic. Uh, Ars Technica article. Uh, I think this was kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I love it. Um, <laughs> Dan Gooden over at Ars Technica. Uh, to evade detection, hackers are requiring targets to complete captures. Oh, excuse me. All right. So it says, uh, you know, so captures are those things where it's like, you know, you try to sign in. You're not a robot. Pick the five. How, What's that? I was going to say, how many squares contain a bush? <laughs> right. Or, you know, my old ass eyes. It's like, oh, yeah, I can't, you know, click, click all the ones that have cars in them. And I'm like, I don't I can't see the ones that have cars in them sometimes. But uh, apparently hackers are, are, are bad actors in this case are actually using uh, captures to halt automated scans of uh malware sites or mm-hmm. what have you so um this come from this is genius i like it well I'm, i mean I, i'm surprised they didn't think of this before yeah using using the technology that we're supposed to be using to try to stop spammers and bots and stuff from signing up for accounts so uh, microsoft mm-hmm. found this it says they recently spotted an attack group distributing a malicious excel document on a site requiring users to complete a captcha most likely in an attempt to thwart automated detection by good guys. Uh, the Excel file contained macros that when enabled installed Gracewire Trojan steals sensitive information such as passwords. Attacks are the work of a group Microsoft calls Chimborazo. Chimborazo, sorry. If I, you know, sorry, threat actors, if I've misspelled, mispronounced your name. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, They've been tracking since at least January. So um, they click on the link or the attachment and it requires the CAPTCHA uh, to be pulled down. So you can't just automatically click on the link and download the Excel document. So if somebody sends that to you in a link or an email, uh, you know, the the automated email system, uh, you know, opens up a browser and then it gets to the capture screen. And since the automated system that it would be scrubbing your attachment can't do that, uh, uh, like a lot of, you know, email systems, the zip file that's encrypted never gets scanned. It's just, oh yeah, it's a zip encrypted file. It must be okay. It's good. Uh, in this case, the captcha halts the automated scanning system and then it can't automatically uh, you know, find out if the Excel spreadsheet is bad. So that's kind of an interesting way of halting that. So I feel like though, if they're doing it um, in line, like there's there's just some endpoint stuff that does that that in line, right? It'll um, sandbox something before, like after you download it, before you yeah, um, before you get access to it, right? Well, yeah, so it- I feel like that would still work. Uh well and and let, if the inbox if the endpoint security solution can defeat the captcha because the idea no, is like the user like the user 
the user clicks on it, oh, puts in the captcha, yes, downloads yes. it, and then it scans. Hmm. I could see that could, being yeah. Yeah, working. that would work. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd still have to to, to capture. I, I it think way. it works like that still. No, that would I that would make the most sense. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out. So Chimbrazo, it's uh, they're deploying info stealing Trojan. Uh, they've involved evolved their methods once again into constant pursuit to avoid detection. So the group is now using websites with capture to avoid automated analysis. Yeah. So that's that's according to Microsoft Security Intelligence. And um, yeah, um, maybe they're trying. Maybe this. Maybe they wanted to stop a specific type of technology from doing it because they knew whoever they were targeting couldn't use. You know. Can can use the uh, you know the automated system so uh, you know maybe a maybe a proof point or something out there you know oh yeah it automatically goes out downloads those or it compares the file hash before it allows you to download it and if the captcha is in place then it can't go to virus total and compare file hashes so um, but yeah I like your I like your idea about using it in a sandbox before before that happens so um, yeah. Huh. Well, I I don't think I have anything else this week. Um, did you have anything? I you said you were on a podcast a couple of days ago. Which podcast was that? And what were you talking about? Um, I don't. I think it's just called the Sidef Podcast. Side I didn't def. ask. I think it's. I think it's just Sidef. C Y D E F E. Yeah. Sidef Podcast. Yeah, which yeah. we had Ray on. Uh, we talked about creating CTFs, I think. Okay. When we had him on last. That's great. And um, yeah, and uh, it was good. We talked about also the Ripple 20 thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and is that Light, Light Phone? Light Phone. Can't remember the name of it. Yeah, it's. um. Uh, security researchers found that you could using a telescope and some kind of device uh, actually watch the reverberation and vib- like the vibrations on lights like light bulbs mm-hmm. and run it through like some thing <laughs> um, and uh, figure out the audio that was in the room. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So it, uh, mm-hmm. so it uses a scintillation from the lights. To, mm-hmm. to do so okay yep i won't uh, when i was in the navy there was some things that were going on in a place that i can't talk about that t- worked with atmospheric scintillation but i can't talk about that okay um, that's interesting yeah i actually did not know that scintillation occurs uh, so yeah that uh, huh that would make sense okay i could see the the sound waves bouncing off the light potentially the glass the glass mm-hmm. uh, refracting or bending the light and okay yeah like okay. super interesting very interesting yes um let me see if you have a link to that uh, that's that podcast that would be uh interesting i don't know if he's released it yet but i can find it okay all right well we'll just make sure that we pass it along to our slack members and uh, also to our our own listeners on twitter as well when that happens so um, I had something I wanted to talk about with, with regard to communications management from a uh, security slash PM point of view, but I think we could probably okay. hold on to that for, for a later date. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm still fleshing that idea out. So, uh, I am I, looking for somebody, uh, that does work in SDLC, SDLC stuff. Um, there is a cert. Did I talk about the book that I was reading that and reviewing that I hated? No, <laughs> no, no, you did not. But now we are. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say what the title of the book is. Good. But yeah, okay, great. I was asked uh, the first time to do it like a year ago and couldn't make it through the first chapter before I sent it back and said no. <laughs> Oh, it's that good, huh? This is terrible. And then they sent it back, and then I got it again, and it was worse. 
<laughs> wait, wait. How could it be worse? Did you did you leave? I, I will go more into detail, not on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who wrote it and if oh they listen. Um, and if they did, I don't care. Like they, they you just don't ever write a book again. One of the authors was really, really good. There was two authors. You could tell like distinctly who wrote each chapter. Really? And, like it was one of the big worries I had when Lee and I wrote. Uh-huh. Like I read through all of his chapters. He read through all of mine. Like I, I wanted it to sound like it was one person that wrote it. Oh, right. Right. right? Same voice. Um, Same voice. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, it, you could have thrown out half of this book and just used the other half. And I, I said it. So after I sent it back again, they're like, no, we really, really, really want you to review this because we know that you're going to tell us the truth. I'm like, all right, just don't attach my name to it. Um, the, and I'll do the it authors, anonymously. The author said this or the publishing company said the this? Publisher, the publisher. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it anonymously if you really, really want me to. And I gave it to them. <laughs> well, are there animals on the cover of this on this potential Maybe. book? Oh, God. Maybe. Um, now I'm uncomfortable. But the stuff that was on there, like, they, they wanted it to be a... They wanted it to be a book for beginners and okay. Uh, the good writer was very advanced. Um, and I think if they end up taking that content and turning it into an advanced level book, it would be good. Oh, okay. um, but <laughs> they just see mail me yesterday asking if I knew any software developers that worked in security. Okay. That could also look at it. Right on. Uh... So if anybody is interested in being a tech reviewer. <laughs> yeah. Reach out to Miss Berlin who can pass your name along. <laughs> I'll show you some of the comments later. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Yeesh. Yo. Okay. Um, well, on that note, let's go ahead and end the show. Uh, Miss Berlin, how would people find you if they wanted to discuss more about event logging for Windows or Logmira or, you know, maybe have some feedback about Logmira that they would like to, to add? Um, you can get me on Twitter at InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R. Okay. Uh, and your mental health hacker stuff is still going on, yeah? Yeah, we're doing uh, one online thing a week almost nice. uh ray redacted hosts them for us and we're having like actual mental health professionals on as guests usually okay um so yep um at hackers health for that one are you taking sponsors for any of those definitely okay so if a company is looking for sponsorships you know they don't have their you know they have all their money from black hat or defcon that they're not going to be able to spend uh reach right. Reach out to Mental Health Hackers or Hackers Health on Twitter, and uh, you know, ask uh, ask Miss Berlin and her crew about uh, potential sponsorships. So, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, Mr. Betcher uh, can be found on Twitter at Betcher Pwned, B O E T T C H E R P W N E D. Uh, he's also the co-host of the Incident Response Podcast, which you can find at um, log-md.com. That's with him and Michael Goff, uh, Hacker Hurricane. They do a lot of information security. Uh, well, it's not information security, but it's incident response stuff. So if you're interested in uh, finding that, uh, it's a continuation of what they used to do as part of the breaking down incident response. But uh, uh, they've they've decided to head out on their own, which is great. And uh, you know they're they're still doing that. And I, I like to. I like to see the content out there because a lot of there's not a lot of information res, uh, incident response podcasts. So um, check that one out if you can. Uh, we have a Slack; it's very active. Uh, we have a lot of people on there. We have a lot of community uh, action. A lot of uh, various channels uh, dealing with sim and logging. We actually have a sim and logging cl uh, class that happens on a, on a on a regular basis with Paige. Uh, she, uh, got updated to a moderator. So she's our, um, one of the, uh, people running our SIM and logging, uh, class that happens, I believe on Monday nights. Uh, you'll have to come and join our Slack and find out. So you can send us a DM to our official, uh, Twitter handle at BreakSec, B-R-A-K-E-S-E-C. 
Uh, or you can email us at bds.podcast at gmail.com. Had a lot of uh, a lot of discussion there. Uh, I'm doing a virtual meetup called CSEC East. It's actually the continuation of our in-person one that we do in the Seattle area. Uh, we're doing it on Zoom. We're actually using the Zoom that I use for BreakSec, but we like to have speakers. So if you're interested in speaking, our next one is uh, Ju- uh, July 1st. If you are interested in giving a 30 to 40 minute talk on anything, please uh, hit me up on my Twitter, uh, Brian Brake, B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. Uh, or you can hit up the, the BDS, uh, the BreakSec uh, Twitter as well, and I'll, I'll pass you along to the organizer, CSEC East. Full disclosure, it's me. So, oh, there's the cat. Yeah, <laughs> Miss Berlin's got Ouch. her cat. Oh, yeah. Oh, poor baby. Oh, it's chonk. It's or chonky. Maybe you scratch my leg trying to get up here. Oh yeah. Nope. There's cat butt. Okay. So um, mm-hmm. we have a T Pub store. If you want to go get a T-shirt or stickers, or I don't know if T Pub has uh, bandanas or anything like that, or you know masks or anything like that. But uh, you can get a uh, break sec uh, T-shirt, or coffee mug, or whatever. Uh, you can go check that out, uh, tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash BDS podcast. Uh, all the links to everything's in our, sh- in our show notes, which is at breakingsecurity.com, B-R-A-K-E-I-N-G security.com. Uh, we're on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, uh, iHeartRadio. We're pretty much everywhere your favorite app catcher is. And we have an RSS link as well, and you can find that at breakingsecurity.com as well. So, all right. Well, we'll be back next week. Miss Berlin, thank you for, for joining me as always. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate your insights about logging because I think it's a very, um, it's not something that's glamorous, but it's something that definitely is helpful in any environment. So I appreciate your insights into that. So, um and our, i tell you what, that's that's gonna be my next tattoo what's that what? live laugh log live laugh log okay okay instead of each shoots leaves it's <laughs> live laugh log yeah okay right. so it it's just gonna be text though right it's gonna be text yes okay cool uh where are you gonna put that stamp. where oh wow um <laughs> Maybe maybe you could put no. Windows Event IDs instead. You know, forty six fifty seven. Ooh, I so, like that. You know. <gasps> oh wow, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know how many of those there are? Gosh. You're gonna run out of uh, you're gonna run out of skin real estate. You know, if you have to put all the you know. Yeah. Windows. Well, I was just thinking IDs. I could make my own Windows Event log as a tattoo, like fill it in with what I want. Oh wow, that could get that could get. That would be kind of cool. That would get intricate. I would get, I mean, you know, yeah. have it, how hard is it to like actually... just the XML of it? Well, yeah, and, you know, what happens if you use a font that's copyrighted, you know? You can't use our, you know, <laughs> Helvetica bold or some shit like I don't that. I think it matters. Just, oh, really? it's art. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was unaware of that. I don't like needles, so yeah. I'm I... not selling. I'm not selling it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Well then, yeah, have at it, you know, just, uh, you know, get it started on one arm, you know, and just have it go down the arm and, you know, that, that should work. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, that is all for the breaking down security this week. Uh, we'll be back next week. Of course, uh, be kind to one another, uh, black lives matter. So get out there and give out, give to some uh, good social organizations if you're interested in doing so. Um, there's no shortage of them out there. You can always Google for, you know, I, I've given out, given, uh, donated to, you know, voters' rights groups and stuff. So feel free to, you know, get out there and, you know, give some time or effort or money if you need to. Uh, you know, mental health is very important. You know, we're all still kind of stuck at home. So remember to take care of yourself. Uh, you know, get out and take a walk. Take care of your mental health. Join the uh, Mental Health Hackers chat if uh you know, you, you find yourself uh, feeling a little low because, you know, it's all, it's very important that we uh, take care of ourselves and the people around us. So uh, have a great week, be kind, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye.